For part two video of one Windows Phone 7 raw camera access, we're going to talk about the continuous capture. So I've already created my Windows Phone uh, application, and I'm going to add an image, just like I did before. But now we're not going to actually have a uh, a rectangle to uh, write to anymore. We're actually going to capture the image. We're going to process it, and we're going to display it in the image. We're going to the image control there. So I've already created my photo camera, video brush, writable bitmap. Uh, I'm going to have that mask that we're going to use a little bit later. We're going to do the same thing we did before: create the camera, video brush. I actually discovered that you have to create even if you're not going to use the video brush, you actually have to create the video brush and set the source to the camera even if you don't use a video brush. If I didn't do that, it wouldn't display it. I'll have to look into why that is. Then we actually hook the initialized event. And remember, if in here, we actually call the dispatch, dispatcher invoke. We set up the bitmap, and we set the source. Very straightforward. Uh, so now what we need to do is we want to, now this actually isn't going to do anything, because we're just setting the bitmap once, we never actually write anything into the pixels. Remember, we have to do that preview of the pixels here. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the system windows threading namespace. And we're going to add, this is one way to do it. We're going to say dispatcher, uh, dispatcher actually timer. And this is going to be image timer. And now in here, Let's create that uh, image timer, dispatcher timer. Oops. And what we're going to do is there's an interval. This is the interval of how often it's called. We had it a time span. Uh, in this case, we're going to use milliseconds. And we're actually going to, we want it to go as fast as possible. Uh, so I'm just going to set it to 30 milliseconds, which will essentially be. 30 frames per second is what we'd like, but it's not actually going to be able to keep up with that, is what we'll find out. Um, we're going to overload the actual image. There's an image tick. Uh, and then we're going to start it. All right, so we're going to make that image timer tick. And in here, this is where we're going to make the call to preview. That image. So now all we simply have to do is say preview or get preview. And we can write to that bitmap. And write to the pixels. And then we can simply just set the source, image cap source equals bitmap. And now this will actually display the video. But remember, we want to actually process the video. We want to do something with it. And the simple thing we did last time was we set everything to, to red. So let's just go ahead. So while the uh, pixels length, and then we're going to make sure and increment our counter. And then we're simply going to take the pixels, current one, and we're going to do the same thing there. And we're just going to or it with our mask. Let's build that, make sure that succeeded. And let's go back over here. Remember how we we use WP Connect to connect to our device. Make sure we can establish a connection. And we can. And we'll go ahead and run it. Let's go back over here. And what's happened is we're actually setting everything to red. I'm holding that right. So now it's very, look at that. 
yeah, the color adjustment on my webcam is not doing it justice. Uh, so it actually is showing that to be more orange than it really is. This is actually very red. And if I can make adjustments on my my webcam to fix that. Hmm. Need some better color intensity here. No, it's not really giving me, not really doing much about well, contrast. Nope. That's bad. Let's try auto gain. Ooh, and my color intensity was a little too. That's probably bad. Okay, so now we can actually see me in there. I'm red. It's actually, uh, rendered all that. All right, so let's go ahead and stop that. Go back to here. Stop that. All right, so this is actually being done in a dispatcher timer. And what ends up happening is that that's going to spend a lot of time in the UI thread. Remember, every time um, this tick happens, we're, we're going to be on the UI thread, and we're actually going to process every pixel in the bitmap in the preview uh, of the of the camera so uh, which means you're going to actually take away from processing time that could be done could be spent on the UI so this is always a no-no we really don't want it we want to do as little actual image processing in the UI as possible in the UI thread so let's actually get rid of our dispatcher and what we're going to do is using the system.threading, we're going to create a thread instead. We're going to say image thread. And I'm going to actually put in here stop thread. What I want to do is we're going to actually make sure that stop thread is set to true when we've unloaded the main page. And now in here, we're actually going to get rid of the image timer altogether. And we're going to say image thread equals new thread. Oops. New thread start. And it's going to be process image is what I'm going to call it. And then we're going to go ahead and call start. I'm just going to make sure that we actually set that stop thread. And so now what we need to just do is we're going to create our process image method. And while stop thread equals false, now we're going to actually take that same code that we had in our image dispatcher. We're going to bring it over here. But now we are no longer on the UI thread. So what do we have to do? We can't, we can no longer make this call. What we can do is we can create a separate update image. And then in this one, we can just actually take this code here. And then at the end here, Say begin invoke, new action, and we're going to call it update image. The cool thing about this is that this is actually going to process as fast as possible. Uh, because once it's done here, it's going to do the invoke, and then it's going to come right back up and do it again. But one thing that we actually want to stop doing here now is we're actually writing to the bitmap directly. And really what we'd like to do is we'd like to create our own buffer. So let's call this, uh, um, call, you know, image buffer. And we want to actually make it the size of the preview resolution. So now we have an image buffer, 
And so instead of copying it into the pixels, the bitmap, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to work with our image buffer instead. We have a separate chunk of memory. It'll, it's working as a back buffer is what it's doing. And so now what we need to just do is we just say copy to right at the end. In this case, this is where we're going to actually copy to the pixels. We're going to copy the whole thing, and this will be a basically a bit blip, and it will happen as fast as possible. So now if we actually run this, it's going to actually do the same exact thing that we did before, uh, but it's going to be running on a separate thread instead of running in the um, in the dispatcher or within the UI thread. So I'd like to do one other thing here. Instead of turning everything red, now I want to get access to um, the actual byte itself. And we're going to actually look at the buffer, image buffer, no, image buffer. Why is it not showing me my image buffer? And what we want to do is we're actually wanting to shift. Basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull out the various bytes um, from each integer that represents the different colors. So in this particular case, I know that the the buff the the integer has the bytes arranged in a certain order. One thing you could do, but you don't want to do, is you could say bit converter, you could say get bytes, and you could hand it that image buffer. And what that would do is that would give you each one of the bytes for that integer, but this operation is actually very uh, intensive and it will it would hurt your performance. So what actually is very fast is to just go ahead and do the shifting yourself. You know what where the where everything will be. For some reason it doesn't want to get it's weird. IntelliSense has a bug there. All right, so I actually know that green um, is actually the last byte, so we don't have to shift it at all when we do a conversion. And basically, when we do a when we cast uh, an integer to a byte, it's just going to take the last byte of that integer. So that's why we're shifting. And I also know that the blue is only one byte over, so we have red, green, and blue now. And so now, what if we actually just take that red, and if we say, if we see a red that's greater than 150, let's say, we're going to actually make it much more pronounced, and we're going to set everything to red. So instead of, or set, set that particular pixel to red, let's go ahead and build that. And let's go do a deployment, make sure we're still connected. All right, and then let's go ahead and run this. And I'm going to open this up. Hopefully my adjustment will work. So now we're not quite all red now anymore. And why is that? Because we're processing that image and we're trying to do something with it. So my kids, uh, one, they have these little action figures. And so this particular action figure is is blue, so we can see, you know, nothing's happened to it. He's not. He's still blue. He's not. He's not red at all. But now, if we take a action figure that has red on it, what should happen is it should detect that red, and it should actually highlight that red. Which actually we're seeing some highlight going on, but there's still there's still an issue in our code that we'd like to fix. It's not highlighting the red as much as I want it to, uh, because it's taking just the the really bright reds, or the the brighter reds, and making them uh, the, as bright as they can be. But we want to to really enhance that. So let's do that. Stop the code. And really, here's a cool thing we can do now. You can actually say 
we're going to look at the difference between green, red and green, and we're going to look at the difference between red and blue. If that difference is 40 or greater, or greater than 40, uh, we're going to actually highlight that. What does that mean? That means that because something is, for something to be predominantly red, it means that the red is high, green and blue are low. So we also we always have to know that the difference between the red and green is always going to be a positive number, and the difference between red and blue is also has to be a positive number for something to be predominantly red. So now, um, in this particular case too, if we put 40 on there, that's actually going to deal with darker reds as well. So let's go ahead and deploy this, and let's see what happens. Same thing there. Run this. So now, when we're looking at this, trying to hold it steady here. So now you're seeing some highlights, but let's do the action figure again. It's actually not an action figure, it's called a go-go. The kids are crazy for this. So now you can actually see that he is not very... He's still blue. No red is showing up on him at all. But now if we take another guy, our other guy here, let's see what happens when we put him in front of it. Oh, there we go. That's what we're looking for. So now we can actually see something that's predominantly red. And it's actually getting highlighted. And this is going to be important for another video that I'm going to be doing here eventually. So, um, so it's a really simple image processing. Um, you can also see that uh, it's processing it pretty fast there um, as I'm moving things around. It's not exactly real time in the fact that it's not 30 frames per second, but it still is doing it very quickly. So I encourage you to, uh, once you get the Mango uh, update on your phone, is to load the code and uh, play around with this. We'll talk, we'll see you the next time, the next video.